Wait a minute. Is that the whistler? Sure, didn't you know? Know what? Why, the whistler's on Sunday now, at this new time. The whistler? Sunday? Now? That's right. Every Sunday at this same time. Well, let's get comfortable. The whistler's my favorite mystery. Yes, friends, that whistle is your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the Whistler for tops in entertainment, and for tops in gasoline quality, it's Signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. The Big Gamble. The crowd in the stands was on its feet, shouting, excited, straining to see as the thoroughbreds on the track below pound around the three-quarter post in a neck-and-neck drive for the finish. And into the home stretch, it's Stargirl and Matchless neck-and-neck. Warlord moving up on the inside. It's Matchless, Matchless by a quarter. It's Matchless by half a length. Stargirl second and Warlord third. Wonderboy, the favorite was out of the money. Oh, Mark. Mark, you lost. Uh-huh. Wonder Boy lost. Oh. Well, he can't win every time. Come on, Lynn. Let's get out of this crowd. Oh, but he was such a favorite. I was so sure he'd win. Yeah. Well, that's what makes horse racing, honey. Yes, to Mark Croner and countless other sportsmen and owners, That's what makes horse racing. But few men are able to take defeat so easily, so quietly, are they, Mark? And to Lynn Carlton, a soft-haired girl with a quick smile, this matter-of-factness is puzzling. But it was all part of a plan, wasn't it, Mark? A plan that was born when a near miracle happened at Glenbrook, your stables, a few years ago. It was your trainer, Andy, who excitedly called you that night and took you into the straw-filled stall to give you the surprise of your life. Well, how do you like him? Oh, oh, he's a little beauty, Andy. And you're quite a doctor. <laughs> oh, say, say, how's Golden Girl? Perfect. Okay. But uh, look over here, Mark, under the blanket. What are you talking? Hey, am I seeing double? Uh-uh. Twins, Mark. Twins. But, but, but I... Sure, I... sure, I know. It's almost a miracle. Statistics say it happens about once in 300,000 times. What's more, I, I've been over them like a Pickerton detective, and they're identical, Mark. Not the slightest difference. Good Lord. Andy. Yeah? Andy, does anybody else know about this? Well, no, not yet. And nobody's going to know either, Andy. Not even Mimi, even if she is your own daughter. Huh? Now, look. There was only one colt barn here tonight. One colt. One? Oh, what about the registry, the jockey oh, club? Oh, we're going to register, Andy. But only one. And I even have a name for him. Wonder Boy. What, what about the other? Well, I'm naming him Wonder Boy, too. Look, it's simple, Andy. There's a chance that one of these Colts is a future champion. That's right. Well, it won't be hard to find out which one. Yeah, I'll go on. And after that, we train the other one to lose. To lose? You heard me. Now, look, Andy. We'll have him so no jockey in the business can boot him home. But he'll still go to the post a favorite. When we want him to. Sure. 
Sure, because, because the Because of the way his brother will have won his recent races. Oh, you got it, Andy? We'll operate from here. We'll keep both horses undercover here at Glenbrook. Then when we decide which horse we want to run, we'll load them on the van and take them to the track. Why, well, yeah, sure. Nobody will ever know the difference. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a sweet setup, Andy. Win or lose, we win. <laughs> With the prologue of The Big Gamble, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Although this is the fifth year that The Whistler has been sponsored by Signal Oil Company, tonight is our first broadcast at this new Sunday evening time. So there are, no doubt, many new listeners among you who would like to know more about the organization that brings you The Whistler. Well, first of all, Signal products have always been sold only through independently operated stations. The reason? Signal Oil Company believes that a man who has his own money invested in his own business naturally has more incentive to serve you better. Secondly, because you want top quality products for your car, each Signal service station is backed by an organization that serves almost 2,000 Signal dealers with facilities to bring you every latest advance in petroleum science. Do drivers like this combination of Signal's personalized service plus fine quality Signal product? Well, just consider the facts. From a mere handful of dealers in Southern California, Signal has grown and grown. Until today, Signal stations serve six Pacific Coast states, from Canada to Mexico. To discover for yourself some of the reasons behind this ever-increasing switch to Signal, why not treat your car soon? to a few tankfuls of Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the Whistler. A card game and a small miracle turned opportunity in your direction, didn't it? Golden Girl, a great thoroughbred, gave you twin foals, identical twins, and you were quick to realize their possibility. But it didn't happen overnight, did it, Mark? The training took many months, hours, weeks of patience from you and Andy. Because it's almost as difficult to teach a thoroughbred not to run as it is to provide him with all the techniques that will make him a winner, a champion. There. Did you get it, Andy? Did you get the time? He's the right one, Mark. Look at that watch. Oh, oh, oh brother. What does that mean, Mark? He's the right one. Huh? Oh, well, uh, he just means that Wonder Boy is going to be a winner. That's all, Mimi. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and if he wins his first race, I'll buy a mink coat. <laughs> You almost wanted to tell Andy's daughter, didn't you, Mark, that you had two racehorses. But the secret was too dangerous to share, and it was to become even more dangerous. It took time, and in the weeks that followed, your winnings weren't large. But Wonder Boy's occasional brilliant performances opened the doors for you, put you amidst the kind of people you enjoy, the kind that can do you so much good. The lovely Lynn Carlton, for instance. You know that she's interested in you, and each evening that you're together, you gain ground. The night on the dance floor at the Club Madrid is no exception. Happy, darling. With you, Lynn? Who wouldn't be? <laughs> Always an answer, haven't you? <laughs> well, I try. Incidentally, darling, I'm not supposed to say anything, but somebody is very interested in you. Oh? You've heard of Colonel Jolly. Oh, sure, sure. Well... He looks as if Wonder Boy had his blood pressure up. I wouldn't be surprised if he came round to see you sometime. Well, I'd rather talk to you. <laughs> you know, I think that's why I tell you things. Nothing goes to your head. Only you. And champagne. <laughs> Shall we go back to the table and finish ours? I'm just the boy that follows you around, sweetheart. <laughs> You try to say all the right things, don't you, Mark? Above all, 
try not to give away any sign that this is what you've been waiting for. Colonel Jolly, his money, the setup that it can provide. And in the morning, you almost can't wait to get down to the stable to be there when he arrives. As you start to leave your apartment, the phone rings. You walk back impatiently and lift the receiver. Oh, hello. It's Mimi, Mark. Oh, hello, Mimi. What is it? You sound as if you wish I hadn't called. Oh, don't be silly. It's just that I'm in a hurry, that's all. Mark, what is it? You keep breaking dates. It was another excuse last night and... Look, Mimi, look, I've told you I'm on to something big. Mark, were you with Lynn Carton last night? Well, sure, sure, but it was business. I've told you, honey, nothing's changed between us. Will I see you tonight? Well, if I can, but I, I'm not sure. Tomorrow night? Yeah, sure, sure, baby, sure. And someday it'll be for keeps, like I've always said. All right. Goodbye, darling. Bye. <laughs> Mimi is beginning to give you trouble, isn't she? But you're afraid to break with her because of Andy, even though you know that it can't go on forever. Lynn Carlton is the nicest girl you've ever known, isn't she, Mark? And you're thinking about her as you drive out to the stables and get out of the car and start toward Wonder Boy's stall. But before you round the corner, you hear something, <laughs> laughter, and then a voice that you recognize and you stop to listen. Now, my boy, that's no attitude. You've ridden Wonder Boy a few times. I only want your opinion, that's all. Well, it's just like I told you, Colonel Jolly. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I only give him a ride. <laughs> quite true, my boy, quite true. But when Wonder Boy loses, why last? Always first or last. It doesn't make sense. Neither does Wonder Boy sometimes. Boy, I brought him in five lengths ahead. Gave him just as good a ride the next time and find I'm trying to boot home a turtle. <laughs> I don't know why. Curious. Curious indeed. Crona wouldn't try doping too easily detected. And if it isn't the jockeys... Well, it isn't, Colonel. Believe me. Just a screwy horse, that's all. You can't mean Wonder Boy, gentlemen. Uh, oh, good morning, Mr. Crona. Well, you're not giving away any of my training secrets, are you, sir? Oh, no, no. I, I was just telling the Colonel here that... Well, I, I haven't even got time to talk. I have to take a work. I, I'll <laughs> see you later, Mr. Crona. <laughs> well, well, you've got them well trained, too, Crona. Uh, I'm Colonel Jolly. Oh, how do you do, sir? I do my best. <laughs> 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 Only I couldn't get anywhere with that boy. Wanted some information about that horse of yours. Wonder Boy? Uh, well, they're bringing him out right now. Come on, let's go down to the store. Delighted. Delighted. Cigarette, Colonel? No, thank you, my boy. Chewing gum's my special vice. Have a stick. <laughs> Thanks. Uh... Last time out, Wonder Boy lost rather badly, eh? Yes, yes, that's right. Not only lost the race for me, but lost me some of my friends who bet on him. <laughs> well, that's good. Stops the rumors, anyway. Huh? Rumors? Well, if you do all right with Wonder Boy, win or lose. <laughs> Almost as though you know in advance how he's going to run. Nonsense, though. <laughs> Just idle tongues, eh? No, not exactly. Oh? I do know. It seems like I can just look at Wonder Boy before he goes to the post and tell what he's going to do. Well, here we are, Colonel. <laughs> ah, beautiful, isn't he? Say. That's my trainer with him, Andy Collins. Used to be a jockey himself. And he's all right, too. Andy, bring Boy over. Colonel Jolly, Andy Collins. How do you do, Colonel? Hello, Collins. So this is Wonder Boy. Beautiful animal, Crona. Expensive, though, to all of us. <laughs> Expensive? In that last race, I bet on him against my old horse, Matchless. What? Yes, yes, I did. I'm a businessman. I've seen Boy gallop off with every race he'd entered before. Seemed a reasonable gamble. I lost. <laughs> but not as much as you'll lose on the Weddington handicap. The handicap? <laughs> Look, Crona, my horse, Corsair, is the heaviest favorite in handicap history. I'm putting 100000 on it. Wow, that's a lot of money, Colonel. Um, <clears throat> would it be worth 25000 to keep from losing that uh, hundred grand? Losing it? Well, Corsair hasn't got a chance against Wonder Boy. That's so. Yeah. Let me show you, Colonel. I've, uh, I've never let anyone know just how fast Boy is. Now, look, you have your horse and a jockey down here early in the morning. 
and we'll breeze them. <laughs> you intrigue me, my boy. You intrigue me. I'll be here. Sure you will. And I'll not only save that hundred grand for you, I'll show you how to make three times that much. All right, son. See you in the morning. <laughs> What's the matter with your horse, Colonel? Johnny must be holding you bit. No, no, no. It's just that Wonder Boy is being let out for a change. Now, here they come, here they come. Keep your eye on that watch. Aha, there. Oh, take a look at that time, Colonel. <laughs> Could Corsair come anywhere near it? Hmm. Quite a horse, that Wonder Boy. Quite a horse. You uh, can save yourself a lot of money, Colonel, if you play it smart. Uh-huh. Smart, eh? If you have a proposition, I'm willing to listen. Well, it's simple enough, Colonel. If you think I've earned my uh, 25000 from you, keep it. Keep it and bet it on Wonder Boy for me. And if you're smart, you'll do the same. At the yards he'll bring, it'll be a cleanup. It's a temptation. But there's too much money going on Corsair. If he loses and it gets out that my money was on Wonder Boy... You want to stay healthy, huh? <laughs> That's the idea. Well, what do you suggest? Why not uh, put our money on Corsair and let Wonder Boy lose? What about the odds? Could be changed, quite simply. For instance, uh, supposing Corsair should hit a slump. And Wonder Boy wins every race between now and the handicap? That's the idea, son. Every race, but uh, not the handicap. You've just made yourself a deal, Colonel. So have you, my boy. And don't forget it. Wonder Boy loses in the handicap, or the only thing either of us will collect will be a long ride and a bullet. Do you understand? Wonder Boy has to lose, or it's curtains for both of us. You just leave it to me, Colonel. We haven't got a thing to worry about. No, Mark, nothing to worry about. And in the weeks that follow, you come closer and closer to the big goal you set a couple of years ago when Golden Girl provided you with twin foals. You and Andy send the real boy to the post again and again to watch him romp home under the wire to win going away. And then the night before the big race, You're awfully quiet, Lynn. Sorry. Guess I shouldn't forget that tomorrow's the handicap and I'm dancing with the man of the hour. I, uh, I wouldn't be too sure about that, Lynn. With all the races Wonder Boy's been winning, I should think you... Look, look, uh, he is a great horse, Lynn. One of the best. But don't, don't put any of your money on him tomorrow. That's a strange thing for you to say. <sighs> let's, uh, let's talk about something else, Lynn. You, huh? No. Let's talk about that girl in the bar. Girl? She's been watching us all evening. Do you know her? <clears throat> well, Lynn, I, uh, I see someone I do know. Would you excuse me, please? Certainly. I'll go fix my phone. Hello, Mimi. Surprised you could get away, Mark. She's been hanging on to you so closely. Listen, Mimi, I've explained it to you before. Business, I know. And nothing's changed. Well, I think it has. Only not quite as much as it's going to. Oh? I love you, Mark. That's something I can't help. But I'm not going to be made a fool of. Mimi, you're not being made a fool of. No? You know, Mark, I suspected you of leading a double life. It was only this afternoon I found out that Wonder Boy does, too. Mimi! It should interest the Racing Association and some of your new friends. Your father... Andy, he's in it, too. That doesn't make it right. I suppose I love you enough that you could make it right. How? By leaving with me right now. Well, Mimi, I just can't walk out. You'd better. You'd better walk, or I'll talk. But I... I... All right, Mimi. My car's just outside. Let's go. You mean it, Mark? Sure. Sure, we'll go out this way. There's no need to make a scene. Let everybody oh, see Mark, us. Oh, Mark, maybe, maybe we could drive down by the river like, like old times, hmm? The river? Yes. Yes, it's only a couple of minutes from here, Mimi. Yes, that's exactly where I'd like to go. The river. Just the two of us. 
Oh, Mark, I'm so sorry I said anything. So am I, Mimi. But it's all right. From now on out, everything's going to be all right. I thought you'd given me up, Mark. Oh, I'm sorry I was so long, but... Well, old friends can be difficult, you know. Especially old girlfriends. Oh, I understand. Mark, you're not nervous about anything, are you? Nervous? Well, sure, sure I'm nervous. I've got a lot at stake, and tomorrow's a big day. Well, let's start it off together. Pick me up, and we'll have breakfast at Mason's. Mm-hmm. We can go onto the track from there. All right. And, Mark... Yes, dear? About the race. I wouldn't worry. The first day I met you, I said to myself, there's a man who'd let nothing stand in his way. There's a man who can't lose. You know, Lynn, I've got a hunch you're right. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. But first, an announcement of special importance about automobile batteries. Because the separators inside a battery have so much to do with the performance and life of the battery, new Signal Deluxe batteries now feature the finest type known to battery engineering, genuine all-rubber separators of the latest improved type. This means both extra savings and extra service for you. The unusually long life that results from this improved construction makes it possible for Signal to guarantee these deluxe batteries, not just for the usual 12 or 18 months, but for a full 30 months on a service basis. In addition, Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power to take care of the many electrical accessories on today's cars. Also, the new design genuine hard rubber cases mean that Signal Deluxe batteries need water less often. Yet, in spite of all these advantages, it actually costs you less per month to own a Signal Deluxe battery. So before you buy any battery, get all the facts. Get your signal dealer's trade-in offer for your old battery, plus his convenient credit terms on today's finest battery, the new, improved Signal Deluxe battery. And now, back to the whistler. It's been a big gamble, hasn't it, Mark? All the way. But it's working out the way you thought it would. It has to. Because as you sit with Lynn Carlton in the box section of the crowded grandstand, waiting for the horses to go to the post, you're aware of the two strangers sitting with Colonel Jolly a few boxes away. They're not pleasant men to look at, are they, Mark? And if there's any doubt in your mind about them, Colonel Jolly makes it all too clear as he excuses himself and comes over to you. Hey, hello, you two. Oh, Colonel Jolly. Colonel? <laughs> all set, my boy? I think so, yes. Sorry, I'm going to have to defeat your colors today. Well, uh, that remains to be seen, Colonel. I, uh, I see you have guests over there. Yes, you, uh, could meet them after the race. Old friends? Uh-huh, they're, uh, very close friends. They have quite a bit of money on Corsair. So have a lot of other people. I wouldn't want to disappoint them. Oh, well, they're coming out. <laughs> there's your horse, Colonel. And there's Wonder Boy. I hope they finish that way. Well, I don't. Not with all that money I have on Wonder Boy. You uh, worry too much, Colonel. Do I? Perhaps. <laughs> then I have reason to worry. Well, I'll see you later, Mark, Lynn. Excuse me, please. <laughs> You watch the colonel go back to his friend, the two men who are staying close by, to take care of you and the colonel just in case anything goes wrong, in case Wonder Boy should win. But Wonder Boy isn't going to win today, is he, Mark? You sense the excitement running through the crowd as the horses file past the stand, back to the starting gate, and then... Damn, there they go. And you try to hide a smile as Wonder Boy makes a slow rolling start stays far back in the field. Try to look disappointed as Lynn glances at you nervously. You turn away from Lynn, exchange a confident nod with Colonel Jolly, and settle back to watch the race. 
Then as the horses go pounding down the back stretch, it happens. You jump to your feet as Wonder Boy begins to close the gap, driving furiously on the outside. Still in the back stretch. On the inside, it's Corsair by two lengths. Ambition and matchless neck and neck. Aragon. And now comes Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy is gaining in the field. Past Aragon. Mark, look. Look at... Mark, what's the matter? Where are you going? But you don't wait. Don't answer as you hurry away from Lynn and push your way through the excited crowd and rush from the stand. From the moment you saw Wonder Boy start his drive in the back stretch, you knew something was wrong. That Andy had sent the wrong horse to the post. And you can't understand why. And then as you race toward the stables, you can hear, still hear the shouts of the crowd, the pounding hooves as the horses come around into the home stretch. It's Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy by two lengths. Corsair second, then Ambition, Aragon, and Matchless. Wonder Boy, it's Wonder Boy on the outside. You rush to Wonder Boy's stall. Grab the stable boy who stands on the fence watching the race. Come on, Wonder Boy. Come on, Wonder Boy. Come on, Wonder Boy. Where is he? Where is he? Where's Andy? Oh, oh hello, Mr. Croner. Where's Andy? Uh, well, gee, Mr. Croner, what's the matter? What, the winner what? is Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy by three lengths. <laughs> Hey, you hear, Mr. Cronery? One, Wonder Boy. Are you one. going to tell me where Andy is? Where is he? Well, gee, he ain't around here, Mr. Croner. Croner, what? Uh, what? Croner, you certainly took care of everything, didn't oh, Colonel. You? Colonel, look, something went wrong. You've got to believe me. I know. My friends here want to talk to us about it. Yeah, that's right. I didn't think you'd double cross me, Croner. I didn't. I didn't. I had nothing to do with Save it. Save it, boys. It's a nice act, but it won't work. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I tell you, I had nothing Save to do it. with it. We we'll talk about it out in the country. You and the colonel are joining us for a nice little ride. If you'll only let me explain, I... Look, kid, where is Andy? What happened to him? Oh, I thought you knew, Mr. Croner. Last night he got a call from the police about his daughter Mimi. Huh? They found her in the river. Cops think it's suicide. He took off right then. I ain't seen him since. Oh, no. Well, no. Gee, you, you can't blame him for leaving like that, Mr. Croner. Poor guy went all to pieces. Why, she meant more to him than anything in the world. <laughs> yes. When he didn't come back, why, I drove out to Glenbrook, your stable got Wonder Boy into the van and drove him here to the track. Oh, Why, well, I thought you... Oh, no, Mark wasn't Wonder Boy. Marvelous. I can't believe I won all... Oh, am I interrupting? Oh, uh, Lynn, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to go for a, a little drive with these gentlemen. Oh, well, that's all right. Shall I wait for you? No, I... Uh, I don't think so, Lynn. I'm afraid you'd have a pretty long wait. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil, and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story was Wally Mayer. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by George Esnes and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>